Hey guys, it's Neil I here at The Verge. I'm in our studio. And uh, Alexis Ohanian. Does it just say Reddit That's on me. your badge? It just says Reddit on it your does, badge. It does just say Reddit on but my badge. Also, but general stuff, bon vivant but in Internet about guy. town. Internet bro. Yeah. Uh, just rolled in and demanded to go on air. So here yeah, we are. I got I got pretty feisty. You guys yeah. had you guys had nice comfortable sofas and I needed yeah, some more nice. sometimes. So very thank comfortable. you. Anyway, so Alexis, you're here. Yeah. Actually, to be, you just had a press conference with a bunch of senators. You're, I did. You're fancy. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. happened there? Uh, well, you know, the, a, a number of us, uh, so Senator Wyden, uh, Senator Moran, uh, myself, uh, and Scott Case, we, we all came there to basically have a press conference about this sort of state of the open internet, right. uh, talking about internet freedom and, and taking questions from the press. Uh, but, you know, those two senators have been really at the forefront of yeah. championing this, and, and, you know, they represent very different political parties, and yet, like so many Americans, can agree on the open internet being awesome and wanting to preserve it at all costs. Right, you know, I think, uh, I don't know who I was talking to, but it was, uh, somebody told me that if you asked Americans to rank their primary needs, mm -hmm. they would pick the internet over water in many cases. It, Wasn't it, it also over sex? Yeah. Or my, I, I, there is, yeah, it's like, you know, it's the hierarchy yeah. of needs has been, in, like, the internet has, like, snuck in over Maslow. the top. Yeah. He could have never seen the internet coming, right? <laughs> he didn't know, man. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't have a, a GS3. <laughs> you give yeah. Maslow a Samsung GS3, he's like, oh. Game change. Yeah, like, wow, it's all, all right. It's all, i got to change all my sudden, book. I'm going to stop writing. Like, he's going to be too busy playing Angry Birds <laughs> yeah, exactly. to bother getting it all done. Well, so, yeah, I will say this. I come to CS every year, and I, for the past few years, I did... I tried to do a bunch of policy stuff. I mm -hmm. chased down Julius Janikowski last year. I've talked to senators, I've gone to the panels. And not to harshen your vibe, but to me it seems like a lot of nothing gets said at mm -hmm. CS about policy. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes here, they take the closed door meetings with, uh, with AT&T, mm -hmm. you know, Verizon waves its hands in the I invited to those meetings for some reason. Well, they, they do not invite me to those meetings. Yeah. But do, mm -hmm. how do you, your, the stuff that you're doing here, the policy kind of stuff mm -hmm. that you do. And I know that you tell me, you always tell me your policy is very narrow. It's mm -hmm. the internet is good, yeah, right? basically. And everybody agrees with you. It's a nice But how do you now. go from everybody agrees with you to making things happen that are good, yeah. especially at a show like this? Yeah, and you know, it, and, and what is, what is a little dis what is a little disconcerting too is you know everyone here is pretty much on board with this like it, right. it, there's a big echo chamber here because we're all you know we've what no matter where we are in our industry we all pretty much support this and the people right. really need to convince do are the ones the in Washington do you think the using the Verizon support this the ones who I actually get to talk to right. do support it you're right the the I think the challenge for us and this is why I don't like thinking about policy uh, specifically uh, is is to make this an issue that is just I don't know that is that is being tackled from I don't know, from, from all of us doing our various things as voters, as entrepreneurs. Uh, and so when I see things like, so specifically, excuse me, we did this Internet 2012 bus tour. Right. We did this bus tour from Denver to Danville to basically show off all of the innovation going we, we on right in the heart. We did a big feature. Yes, yeah, so yeah, TC, TC did a fabulous did job. Great, yeah. um, and so we debuted our documentary called Silicon Prairie, which mm -hmm. we showed it here, but I'm more excited to be showing it in DC on Tuesday at the museum and hopefully get all these people in Washington realizing that like they all have a digital district. I think that's that's right. my favorite catchphrase that's come out of this weekend because it's not just, you know, if you're in Silicon Valley, it's it's every district in America has right. constituents who care about this. And you know, these policy discussions, yeah, they're not going to go anywhere until it is so clear that every American cares about this that it, that that making a decision against the best interest of the open internet is going to upset Right. all of your voters and make sure you don't have a job. Well, you know what I think is really interesting? It, it's funny how politics is changing in a place like Kansas City, where mm -hmm. yeah, Google fiber. dropped in Google Fiber, yes. and now there's this like vibrant startup economy in Kansas yes. City that's just happening because there's real connectivity there. Yeah, and uh, it's... It, in, in a very serious way. Mm -hmm. And that will change once, once you get a flood of entrepreneurs in a place where they haven't been. The yeah. local community and the local politics will change, and we and we see this happening. We saw this happening in downtowns all over, where you know for for decades these downtowns were derelict. These buildings were abandoned, and startup communities are moving in there because they're getting you know large space, yeah, great right. rates, downtown hubs with bars and restaurants, all this stuff. We're seeing these communities be reborn thanks to the internet economy. And what Google's done has been so great because it's you know I I think. What I like, I, I, I like to think of myself as a doer, and I think so many of the people doing great stuff right now, are, yeah. that's the key word, is they're, they're doing it. And so Google actually did what everyone said was not possible, too right. expensive, we can't have the fastest internet in the world at a reasonable price, but they're right. doing it. And once you do it, it becomes really hard for all their competitors to hem and haw about, oh, that's not possible. Um, so that, that kind of stuff is exciting, and I, I, I want to look to activate more of those kinds of projects because it's going to motivate other people to follow suit and actually realize how big of a deal this is. And do you think, are you getting a good vibe at this, at this show in particular? Yes. I mean. Again, it's there. There is. It's an echo chamber. Yes, right. It, right. It's, we're we're all, 
you know, I don't, you don't get invited to the AT&T meetings. Uh, <laughs> but those of us who are here <laughs> and actively talking about What do you think those issues, meetings are like? I just imagine them like. Everyone's got a cat on their they're, Yeah, they're all, so they're dressed all in black with so maybe yeah. like a red tie. You know, <laughs> yeah. and it's just like, hmm. Yes, what can we do about we will, we will take Google Wallet off of the phone. Yes, yeah, so we can, yeah. competition. Well, no, is you not, know, if you go to Verizon cool. Booth, and Verizon Booth, to be fair, is very impressive. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you go to it, uh, what's really interesting about it is uh, the phones are pushed all the way to the back. Mm -hmm. Verizon doesn't want to talk about phones at mm -hmm. CS. They want to talk about a bunch of other devices, right? Mm -hmm. Here's a bunch of tablets. Here's like some weird crap for your house. And it's all connected to our network. But they don't want to talk about how when they bought the the 700 megahertz spectrum from mm -hmm. the government, mm -hmm. uh, Google basically forced them to sign an open access provision so that any device could use it. Yep. And it's been years and years, and literally no devices that use that provision have ever come to, come to the table. Yeah. Uh, and that means that, you know, uh, Vizio announced phones here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're nice, you know, they're competitive with Sony, right? Five inch 1080p. They're competitive with an Android phone. Yeah. But they're going to China to sell those phones yeah. because they can't get on the American carriers here. And yeah. that's like, if the internet's that important, then we need to get at and and Verizon in the conversation, it really, in a very proactive, determined way, and say, the internet's important, the mobile internet, I think, is more important. Mm -hmm. Well, when you start talking about, not, I mean, don't even get me started on the importance of tiny internet. Uh, <laughs> but big, yes. Big, we need bigger phones and smaller internet. <laughs> yes. I but get it. It's so, I mean, when you, when you hear stories like that, and it's like, they found more opportunity for their business in China, yeah. like, that is not a sentence that should, like, uh, it, as an entrepreneur here in the States, like, I, it hurts me to hear that right. uttered. Uh, and competition is ultimately going to make all of our lives better as consumers, and we just want better stuff. Uh, and yeah, you know, incumbents may not like that, but the spirit of this whole capitalist system is right. like competition is going to constant either, disruption. It's going to have to disrupt you, and uh, and it's frustrating because we encounter this with soap and Pippa. We continue to encounter it, and I, I mean, fortunately, we have a voice as consumers, right? We have more ways than ever to be able to let people know what's what. And what's cool, and we were talking about this earlier, there are more and more new and new entrants to the world of hardware. Right. Thanks to things like Kickstarter, thanks to all the new things that are, you know, showing up here at CES now that a few years ago were in a garage that started out as a conversation over beer. So we should talk about this because I know, I feel like your 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 foot in the door of the policy world is actually you want life to be better for startups because you're really mm. a startup guy. Yes. Uh, and so your your policy stuff I know is very public, but really you're just trying to make money with your startups. It's very selfish. Straight cash. Very selfish. Like, uh, which is great. I don't know what I would do with my life if I did not have the startup economy. I don't. Right. I, I would. I'd, I'd probably. We, we, I'd be a lawyer, right? It's <laughs> terrible. Remember that? Those yeah. guys, those yeah. guys suck. <laughs> awful. No, but <laughs> let me ask you. The, here's what I think is a really interesting story at the mm. CS. Uh, there is uh, a whole like giant collection of essentially Kickstarter projects here mm -hmm. that are the story of the show. Mm -hmm. So the Pebble guys had a press conference yes. this morning, the smartwatch. That thing looks amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the Oculus Rift on our show yesterday. That's a Kickstarter project, the immersive head tracking. Mm -hmm. uh, we just we were actually just here with another guy, the uh, Central Standard thing. Timing, yeah. World's Thinnest Watch. All these indie hardware developers mm -hmm. who are you know, crowdfunded essentially, mm -hmm. and they're making cool products. I think that's a great story here, that there's hardware startups doing innovative things. Mm -hmm. I think there are lots and lots of question marks about how they go from I'm a guy who had a cool idea and raised hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars to I'm a company. Yes. How do they how do they make that jump? You know, and I know I know the Pebble Watch team well because they were in Y Combinator and they had an interesting story because they could not raise money. They right. went to AngelList, you know, they, they had had the sort of blessing of YC. They still couldn't raise money because people were scared about hardware. Even right. though they built prototypes and they went to Kickstarter and you know very famously raised ten million dollars. And I, I hope, I really hope, not just because I'm friends with them, um, but I really hope that they succeed and really deliver a great product. We're all hoping it is, because you know that's a $10 million campaign that everyone's looking at to see if right. this means you can start a real company. I think, I think they're going to be able to do it. There are a lot of people, smart people on both sides, who think, a, they're definitely going to make it, right. and, or there's, they're and they're going to crash out, yeah. and this, this crowdfunding, like the hype bubble, will basically pop. There is, I think there is, we are undoubtedly due for a spectacular failure. There's right. gonna have to be some hardware company that raises millions on, kick, well actually they won't even be able to raise it on Kickstarter anymore because of their constraints mm -hmm. about like a creative project versus a hardware one, but you know, crowdfunding is gonna evolve. Someone will crowdfund a ton of money for something yeah. out of a garage that's gonna be a spectacular failure and everyone's gonna be like, dub TF. Um, but I think- Dub? Dub TF, All yes. Right. I, the, the, the broader hardware industry is resilient enough and, and the cost of getting this stuff started keep falling enough yeah. that 
that I think consumers, so long as they're prepared with you know what they're doing, taking a bet, a gamble, and, and accept the risk, buyer beware. But beyond that, to know that like pre-orderer beware. Um, I think it's going to mean more innovation and more cool stuff. And I hope. I hope the larger companies look at this and instead of thinking, I mean, we all see this, right? We see hardware that, you know, it, maybe it's, it's got some shine on, it's got a little polish, a bell and whistle, but at the end of the day, no one probably actually wants it. Right. And, and well, it's so like, let me ask you this. How do you avoid making something no one wants? Well, what if you started with this pre-order? Well, what if you started yeah. with the demand? What if you so there, I mean, that? there's two things there that I think mm -hmm. are, are gonna be challenges, I think, mm -hmm. for the industry at large. Because I, I think looking at this CES, I think the vibe of it is very much more like the beginning of like the computer era, right? Mm -hmm. Bunch of guys in garages trying all kinds of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. They're enabled by uh, basically smartphone platforms. So people mm -hmm. are like, now I have a smartphone, what else can I do with it? Mm -hmm. And there's like, try all this other stuff. And I think that's where the Pebble Watch comes in. I think that's all the body tracking stuff, the Fitbit. Mm -hmm. But I also think that there is like, you know, two years ago I came to the show and ASUS was here and they were kind of a new company, mm -hmm. right? They were just being introduced to the world and they had like a thousand crazy concepts mm -hmm. and maybe nobody wanted them, but like it put them on the map, but none of them ever shipped. What, I mean, is there a difference? I mean, is there a difference between ASUS and maybe some other Chinese company here that we've never heard of mm -hmm. uh, doing crazy stuff at the big corporate level, Samsung showing off curved phones that are never going to ship, <laughs> and then this like economy of like little guys? I, you know, I, I want to believe I really want to believe that the more people we can get trying crazy shit, the yeah. better off. As long as we know that most of it's probably going to fail. As a, I mean, as a startup investor, I certainly think about that with software. Right. And and hardware is still more complex. Obviously, you know, when you have a when you have ten thousand broken widgets, right. like it's a lot harder than just. You know, we had Matt Rogers code. from Nest in here, and they're a startup, yeah. and obviously yeah. they're you know they're well funded. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of very smart people from Apple, and he was like, to ship our first product it took seventy people. Uh, and it's a thermostat. Right. Like, a, a pretty, really and, good And he's thermostat. like, you know, yeah. they're, they're using smartphone parts. They basically built a smartphone that can tr control your, your furnace. Yeah. And he's like, it took 70 people to make that project. And hmm. it's like, I don't know that you can crowdfund your way into 70 people. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it's to be seen. I know the Pebble Watch team is maybe two dozen. Yeah. I don't know how many. I mean, it's, and, you know, it's, it, we're still, I guess what, what gives me hope, and I am the, well, glass is not half full, but uh, it's a far, quarter. Far full, it's not even close. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm an optimistic guy, yeah. and I, I really want to believe that long term, it is gonna. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's very empowering of you. Totally. Uh, long term. <laughs> my glass is now empty. Oh, it's, it's, so I just want you to know that. Wow, this my really, part of this conversation see, is gonna I get weird. I see where you're coming from right now. <laughs> oh, geez. Go ahead. Uh, but I, I, I absolutely see a future where. You know, we're, we are now at two, three years into the Kickstarter experiment, right? right? It's still so early, so early, that the, the, the long-term future just, it makes a lot more sense to me that you would build something as intensive as hardware, whether yeah. it's a thermostat or a watch, based on demand, right. as opposed to building it and trying it Hollywood style of just like throwing enough ads and trying to convince someone that, sure. you know, John Carter is gonna be a good movie. Uh, which I haven't seen, that's probably so not fair. But John Carter's a terrible movie. He's a bad movie. Yeah. Um, Based on a classic sci-fi canon. Yeah, but the thing is that the, yeah. the other movies that came out after, after the, the other, there's so many mo other movies that ripped off the book yeah. Yeah. that now John Carter seems cliche. It's like, uh, 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 it's like Van Halen. Uh, like Van Halen guitar solos seem really cheesy to you now, yeah. and then you think to yourself, oh, yeah, no. he was the first guy. Who rocked out with the guitars? I, huh. I so never, like the cheesiness factor in uh, context is, no. It's the price of fame. Dude. Someday people are going to think you're super cheesy because you're so I famous. Think already, I think they already do. Oh, Does true. that mean I'm super famous or just super cheesy? You're just the mayor of Damn it. Uh, it's, it's far off the road. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, let me ask you this. Is there a, not a danger that if you are Samsung or you are mm -hmm. Acer or whatever, Lenovo, any of these mm -hmm. huge companies, mm -hmm. you're just going to start looking at Kickstarter mm -hmm. and you're going to say, man, these four kids in a garage are oh. generating a lot of demand for this watch, mm -hmm. but we're Samsung, and we can kick out the watch tomorrow yeah. and steal their thunder, yeah. and we don't have to do focus groups anymore. The, so yes, in theory that makes sense. It's dastardly, but it's certainly been done before. I mean, I think dastardly is actually the ground state of the industry. <laughs> like when things aren't dastardly, I'm like, yeah. something weird is going Something's on. Something's not right, okay, yeah. fair enough. The, but the thing, the thing that I look at right now and present is that like every one of these, every one of those hardware companies you just named, they probably all sit around the boardroom with their Apple devices and are like, right. so we need to do this. And yeah, there's the, <laughs> there's the patent side of stuff, which right. is a whole other issue. But like, 
every one of them has an example of how to make this kind, how to design this kind of thing that people clearly want. Right. That's beautiful, that's well designed, that's well thought out, okay, and yet they still can't really do a good enough job replicating it. So, sure. I mean, they, that's, they're, 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 there's, there's been a lot of progress made, but it's still, like, oh, so you Apple can't capture that. It's now arrived. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I own a few Apple devices. <laughs> But it is still, <laughs> like, I don't it's know hard to them. capture, it's hard to capture that spirit. Yeah. And I, and I, I, I am foreign to the world of hardware, yeah. but I know for startups, we are, we are never afraid of the incumbent trying to copy what we do. So specifically like with Hitmonk, Google launches, Google flight search, great job, Google. That's awesome. We don't care right. because they don't care enough about solving this problem as our team does. Right. And I think, and in many ways, you're just hardware, validating your model. Precisely. Right? Yeah. And so I think, and I know hardware is a different ballgame, but I think it's, it's the same way for these upstart companies. And if they were to get copied and replicated, it still wouldn't, whether it wouldn't feel genuine, it wouldn't work as well. It just wouldn't, I don't know. It, I, I don't, I still don't believe they could execute it nearly as well right. as a team that's so wholeheartedly focused on it. But I, I mean, I, my, my response to that would be mm -hmm. to focus on the hardware-software difference because mm. it's really hard to do software. But I think if you are Samsung, mm. it's way easier for you to do hardware than any team of indies. And I think that mm. the, the cost and the scale and getting the distribution and going to Best Buy. If you're Samsung, you make 100,000 or anything. If yeah. you're Samsung, you can say, we're going to make a point-and-shoot camera that's an Android device yeah. and make AT&T sell it, even though it's not, even though it's more of a concept yeah. card than yeah, any the, kind of real product. Yeah, once you bring AT&T to Verizon, that just muddles everything. Just, Open the internet. But, See, but we've come about, all the way around. This is why it's so important. Yeah. Well, wait, but real quick, though. You mentioned something. Best Buy? Is that a... To sell hardware. But what is, You've got to go a, somewhere. What is a Best Buy? Is that a... Is that a it's, it's a place, place where you don't so buy people, hardware. Where do you buy all your hardware? The internet. From? You don't buy people it all on go the internet. We got to go to Amazon. Go, like, right. So I, I'm just I I wonder I, hear, I, I wonder as as this world continues to get disrupted, you know, the importance of obviously, you know, it's, it's still nothing to laugh at. You I get mean, that where deal. Where do you buy your Apple device from? Is it, is it the online? internet. You know where the regular people buy it from? The Apple Store. Oh, the regular people? The, no. Yeah, the not I, not the mayor. Not the nerds. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, okay, yes, I've seen the lines, and I mean, yes, they're beautiful Yes, you've stores. seen the massive they success of the Apple stores, stores hear, around the world. I hear they've done well. Yes, you've seen but Microsoft and Samsung racing to that's, copy their strategy. That is like, well, and that's, and here's another example where, yeah, you know, and I've walked by the Microsoft store in New York, and it's like, okay, it's sleek, it's polished, but I don't know, I mean, I don't well, see. Well, because they don't have the hardware. You yeah. can't sell software at the store, right? Right. Uh, and Apple strategy, they sell software online, they're mm, massively the successful, yes. they sell all the hardware products in the store, and when you go to the store to buy mm. software, they hand you a gift card until you go online. That's fast. Yeah, I need to spend more time in the real world instead yeah. of just buying get out of your screen. Get out of your bubble, man. <laughs> Take but your I, Oculus Rift off and come back to the real world. <laughs> but this is interesting. I do hope, I mean, I, again, bring a lot of hope to this table because I got my glass this I mean, full. this is what happened. I emptied there my is, glass and now I'm like way in the, in the ground. There is, 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 so long as our expectations are set appropriately as pre-orderers yeah. or backers, whatever you want to call it, right. I, I, I can't help but feel like we're going to get better stuff because, you know, for, for decades, you know, these industries do, I mean, these industries, do, they do a lot of navel gazing, no matter yeah. whether it's hardware, software, whatever it is. And to be able to just say, like, you've got a garage, you can, you know, if you've got a 3D printer, like, you I can do get started. I do agree with you there. I think, I think there is, and we'll end on a hopeful note okay. here. I'll okay, try. See, I'll see, what, I'll, I'll see if I can do this. Do I need to give you some water? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, God, it feels so good. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, amazing. That's it. Oh, oh that's, give me those That's last. the water of Now you're going to, like, start crying. No, I will say this. Uh, we talk a lot as we cover this show. Mm -hmm. right? We were here in force. We've got 68 people. We're rolling deep. Uh, we talk a lot about how covering the show for us isn't necessarily all about the news. The news is important and the product mm -hmm. announcements are great and whatever. But the visceral experience of we're here, the entire industry is here, everybody you could possibly want to talk to is here, mm -hmm. and everybody thinks the world is cool and going to do better stuff. Mm -hmm. We're trying to communicate that to like basically myself as a teenager. Right? That's what I think <laughs> of my reader that? as, right? Yeah. I think of you, like the, the mass of our readers is people who love technology, yeah. who don't have the opportunity to come here, who yeah. want to see what's going on. And I think there's something far better about, yeah. let's show them all these startups, particularly hardware startups, doing things like the Oculus Rift. Have, yeah. you, have you tried this thing on? I have not. You got to find it. Uh, the Oculus, it's this immersive head tracking display. It is like you are in another world. It is At, the future. For gaming? For gaming. Like Wait, you run is around. This the one, is this the one that Carmack pitched yeah, in yeah, the yeah. Kickstarter video? Or like yeah, no, that's the one. And we yes. did it. Okay. I mean, that thing is amazing. All you had to say was Carmack, and I was there. Done. They were here. We did. We had them on our show, Top 
shelf yesterday, yeah. and then they set up in the little office in our trailer, mm -hmm. and we had a line, 30 people on our staff stood in line, waiting to try this thing out for a minute each, because it is so crazy. And I think saying, huh. and the inventor, it was the guy who invented it, yeah. and his product right now, you know, they, they're here to announce the productized plastic case, mm -hmm. but the one that we used was like literally like wires and circuit boards nice. in a box. Stacked together, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, well that's awesome, yeah. right? I mean, it, that's mm -hmm. like, you don't have to go work for Samsung. Yeah. You don't have to try to get a job at Apple, yeah. which is a daunting task. You can just try to make stuff. And what is so what is Look so this. important this is about like, that storytelling? It's working, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. What is so important about that storytelling is it is showing and it is showing it when it's just an ugly hack. It is right. showing it before it's the polished thing that we're all looking at that comes out of the box and right. smells all new. Like because when you look at that and you see the ugly hack, you're like, wow, like this started out as a pretty humble looking yeah. piece of hardware. And it right. makes some teenager think, oh, okay, this is accessible. This I is show how I you, do it. Right. I show you a finished iPod and you're like, come on, I don't, right. I don't have I don't the connections have decades of Japanese administration experience. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let alone an army of underpaid Chinese employees <laughs> to manufacture it at scale. Soon we'll have those throughout the oh, heartland right. because of the open internet. Think uh, about it. Wait, what? I don't know. I'm just trying to. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to get you down oh, the weeds of oh, your no. empty glass. Uh, uh, well, no. I mean, that, I will say that. I will yeah. say that. The thing that's different about the ASUS concept cars mm -hmm. and the, in, the bunch of indie people trying to make stuff and maybe failing mm -hmm. is that that story is inspiring. Yeah. ASUS making weird stuff is like, a, maybe you, maybe you can buy this, maybe you can't. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of kids out there trying to build their own cars after car shows. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. No. But they, they well, who knows? If 3D printing takes off like we hope it will. <laughs> Like you, you think, <laughs> what's your? Do you have a three D printer startup in your in your, I, in your labs? I I don't, I, I don't even know how that works. I do right. not. Um, actually, well, you know, down the street from me is MakerBot. Right, MakerBot. Um, so representing Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, but they, you know, I, I'm so I love talking to three D printing enthusiasts because they are they're there they are ten years in the future yeah, yeah. they are already living in they they know exactly where this is headed. Um, I'm a little bit more cautious in terms of where this is all going. I'm an, I'm I'm I'm. I'm I, I, I expect a really, hopefully, awesome future yeah. where, yeah, the, you know, the idea of doing You're manufacturing. Just a hopeful man. Dude, is, this is true. There's a lot of hope going on here. <laughs> but there, you know, where, where manufacturing does actually start coming back here and actually rapid prototyping can happen right. for an upstart. Uh, we actually met one in Boulder on the bus tour yeah. that does all of their prototyping right there. They got a 3D printer. They make these badass sort of uh, like 21st century Legos, these little cubes that stick together and start whirring or spinning and rotating. Anyway, they do all of their manufacturing except for a few basic circuits right there in Colorado. That's and awesome. they can do so with some 3D printers. That's and, cool. and it's like, again, it's still so early, but you can get a glimpse into what's going to hopefully be a pretty awesome next five to 10 years. Oh, okay. So two questions. Yeah, up. sure. One, what's, your, what's the best thing you've seen here? so far? The best thing... Uh, Aside from the Verge compounds. Damn, you beat me to it. Um, well, I, and again, I'm, I'm biased because I'm chummy with the Pebble guys, but I am I am really, really hopeful I this too. continues I to be know. like, I, I, like I, I really think it's going to, I mean, I'm looking forward. I got the black one. Yeah. I'm really hoping it meets and lives up to expectations. So yeah, I'd probably be Pebble. Uh, and then what, what was your second question? My last question is the question I'm asking everybody. Uh, right. what, what apps are on your home screen on your iPhone? Oh, I don't have my, oh, I do have my phone on me. I think, okay, let's see. Evernote? Oh, good. Um, oh, and I turned my phone off because I wanted to be a responsible interviewee. Yeah. Evernote. Um, uh, Alien Blue, of course, for reading the Reddit. We don't have an official app at Reddit. There's an Australian developer who's awesome and made the Alien Blue Reddit app, which you should all download. Nice. Um, and a bunch of random stuff. I only recently discovered Gmail as an app on the iPhone. You're I've been using the janky what is wrong with mail you? It's app really for good. weeks. I know. And I, I, think, used, I think I used to it's curse. It's like proof that Google is getting really good at design. Yeah. Uh, while, while Apple's like, needs to figure out cloud services. Oh, man. Have you tried Maps lately? I. Oh, <laughs> Uh, okay, well, man. we're out of time. Thank you so much, Les, for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. Uh, people who are watching, you should stick around. Uh, Top Shelf is coming up at, at, uh, at 3, 4, sometime very soon. 3 o'clock. Uh, Top Shelf is coming up at 3, so stick around. We're actually going to have all of the watches that we've been talking about. Ooh. The Pebble, uh, the Central Standard Timing, the, the world's thinnest one. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a bunch of stuff. It's going to be great. I won't be here. It'll be David Pierce and uh, some other guys not as good as me. Well, but, and, that, and that show will surely start on time, I'm right? sure. You're done. Yeah, Let's cut this. What? No. Cut it off. Oh, I You're need fired. more water. <laughs> Can I fire you? You fired. Can you on? hire me first and then fire me? You're hired. Oh, thank you. You're I'm looking fired. forward. When do I? Alexis oh. Sylvanian, everyone. I can clean up my desk.